the difference is the, of Max's version to, I think, I suppose, a standard version is that it takes the character who's in fact not in the novel, Igor, and tells the story through his eyes. It's a brilliant device whereby you get a completely fresh set of eyes on Frankenstein, not just from an audience perspective, not just a fresh audience, you know, but a fresh character's vision. Um, and Igor is a character that we've known to love, whether it be through Mel Brooks or whoever, you know, we, we've come to know him as part of the Frankenstein story. But um, to make him a dramatic, you know, counterpoint to the, or not counterpoint, like a, like a centrifugal point to the movie is um, brilliant because he's also someone you sympathize with terribly, you know. Not only is he, you know, in the disadvantaged state of starting the movie as a cripple, but he's also a moralist and he's a romantic and he's someone we all kind of, you know, hope is inside of us, you know, um, fighting against all adversity. Exactly what Mary Shelley intended with her novel is you don't know who's good and who's bad. If, what would you do in those people's shoes? Probably what they do. And that's what's so interesting. And Max has nailed that. You know, you don't, there is no set villain. Everybody is compromised, except Igor. But everybody is compromised because they're all human beings and they all have their own desires, which to an extent for ambitious people, and all of them are that, which is really interesting. See them in the same movie is they all are totally um, un unswerving in their desire to reach that goal. And so when you start seeing those, you know, c clash and coincide, you see villains coming out of people that you hadn't seen before. You see um, heroes being made from where you thought there was no redemption. Finnegan actively encourages, uh, he encourages um, Victor's ambition. He sees, he's very good, like a lot of psychopaths are, uh, at identifying weakness in others. He sees that Victor is uh, comparative, certainly comparative to him, poor, um, without a benefactor, hugely ambitious, an egomaniac, um, and needs this linchpin to fulfill his goal. He sees that he, and he's also a, a freak, he's ostracized from society, and so he can pl pl use those... Um, uh, those insecurities. Similarly with Igor, he sees a moralist, someone who's not prepared to sacrifice, you know, their, their, you know, goodness. Um, and he, you can, you can manipulate that too. It was, um, an amazingly epic experience, one that you were so proud to be a part of because there was almost no acting required. You, you had everything that these people had in the story, this, these lifts, these scaffolding, these bell towers, a whole shaboodle was there, right, for you to use. Um, and certainly as an actor who, you know, you have to have a expansive imagination to, you know, go into any number of characters over the course of your life. It made me think, hell, Eve Stewart has an infinitely large imagination than I will ever have, you know. And she just uh, nailed it, you know. I, I don't believe anybody who sees the movie won't be able to slightly go, oh, ah, oh, you know, when they see it. And it, Matt, they'll, they'll, half of them will think it's all invented on a computer. Of course it's not. It's real. I came on set on the first day in Ealing and saw James doing it, and I thought, oh, there you go. <coughs> that, you know, that's how it should be done. Um, uh, he's just he's an extraordinary actor. He's an extraordinary man. You know, he's terribly kind, very giving, theatrical. In the, I, I mean that in the best sense, because... He got all that energy and that exuberance to fill the boots of a, of you know, of the of the, of the main, of, you know the title character, um, and yet is always you know with younger actors and and less experienced actors like myself always generous and helpful and creative and and allows you the freedom to be able to do what you decided to do too. It's a very th it's a lovely and I mean I do mean it in the best way a theatrical experience working with him, because you feel like you're working with a real actor. And you are, you know, in every respect. He's a really, really special actor. Dan is, um, you know, I knew he was attached to the project, obviously, before anybody else, which immediately made me interested and excited by it because I admire what he's done very much, certainly in the wake of the biggest franchise that movies have ever created. He um, has chosen his roles you know, just from an outsider's perspective, he's chosen his role so well, you know, from theatre through to movies through to television, you know, he's done it all. And absolutely shown what an incredible character actor he is. And this is like the biggest 
perhaps other than Cripple of Inishman, this is the biggest character I think he probably has ever played, you know, huge physical transformation. And so to come on set on who you think is going to be, you know, for anybody else, you think you're going to find Harry Potter, you find a character, a seriously accomplished character actor who, again, has all the kindness and generosity of, um, you know, the best trained stage actor, you know, I've ever, you know, you could hope to work with. He's creating a really, um, you know, juicy, flavoursome, uh, you know, uh, carnation of incarnation of Frankenstein. Um, and, you know, if you look at any of his other films, all of them have fantastic design. They're all shot brilliantly. And that's something you notice about him immediately is that he's incredibly visual. He knows exactly how he wants something to look and how to go about achieving it, where, you know, a, dir a director of any less, lesser talent would you know, struggle to create something so kind of seminal, really, in its way, in its, in its ambition, in its scope. Um, he doesn't, because he just has the, the, the eyes to be able to, to make it work. And on top of that, he's incredibly supportive to his actors. He allows you the freedom to, to do your own thing. And again, with a character like Finnegan, who's a gothic villain, you know, you kind of need a bit of freedom. Uh, and you need someone to be able to say, yeah, you just, you, if you feel like you should do that, do that. If it's too much, I'll tell you. And he does that. It's a new version of a great tale, you know, but it's, I want uh, my generation, a generation below me, to be able to go, God, what a fantastic story, you know. And it doesn't necessarily need to inspire them to read the original book. I just want them to be able to go to the movies, see some great stories characters in a great story be brought to life by people who are really good at doing that led by Paul who is you know one of the best I've worked with